Oh dear. Right. My question now is, which version of the Hellcats do you wish to fight? The easier one, please. Doesn't matter to me, but uh, yeah, let's just take the easier one. Easy, please. Right. That means you start with full life minus five. Hold on. Minus five, you say that would be okay, thirty-two. And sorry, I just need to adjust our items again so that we get them back. And so blah 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 blah. Boring procedure. Yeah. In the meantime, given here, you may roll the die. Roll. Nine. Okay. Well, you open up battle with a fierce cry and charge your enemy that you're pretty certain is a lot stronger than you, but you're not gonna let that intimidate you because, <laughs> honestly, how bad could it go? You're the kind of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, clearly this a certain attack surprises him. He had apparently expected you to succumb to the poison. But your first cut is steep and painful, as you can hear on his ungodly howling. Nonetheless, he managed to strike out and scratch your cards with chins for four damage. Which ones? I don't know. The left one. So turn your right one to him. <laughs> I don't believe in that concept. Actually, there's a lot more to that concept than people initially uh, just think. There's actually uh, something behind it. But we can explain that to you afterwards. This is not a discussion about the true meaning of biblical metaphors and stories and stuff. In any case, no. we'll die again. This is about kicking evil Seven. doers in the shin. Okay. You follow the attack with a fierce stab to the, his torso, black blood spilling to the ground. From his position, however, he has a good opportunity to pummel your face something fierce. You lose six life. This is getting ridiculous. Rover die again. Four. Four. Okay. Well, you dra drag out your sword, which cuts me more, but in a moment of imbalance, he lunges forward and punches you straight in the solar plexus, and you can feel your entire skeletal system buckle under the force. You lose eight life. Yeah. yeah. This is sort of like fighting the uh, dark equivalent of the Hellgas version of a Vegeta. His power is at maximum. No, it's not. It's over 9,000! And now with that out of the way, bro, <laughs> die. So I had to, sorry. It's okay. Yeah, it is. It was good. It was really good. Yep. Give me a bro, die. One. Oh god. Oh god, 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 oh god. Well, you're staggered from the previous painful blow, and now receive one that could be charitably described as earth shattering. Or at least that's what you consider it as you fly through the air, looking at the spinning room as it passes you by before you smack dab into the wall. You lose 10 life. I think the only thought going through his mind at this point is, where did it all go wrong? <laughs> As he dances through the air without a care in the world, he was considering where had this gone wrong? Why wasn't he back in his treeless restaurant serving burgers? Why was he out here flying through a crazy monastery? Where had it what all gone so wrong? Why did we have to stop by this place? <laughs> Roll the die again, give it here. So all this being sent out. One again, by the And then as you stand up against the wall, wondering, hey, you see that the fist of the Hellcast is flying towards you with a speed that would be very much fitting on a runaway freight train. Now, after losing 10 life, how much uh, life do you have left? <laughs> I think... I think, to be quite honest, anything that is structurally stable in us, it's gone. We right. are dead. The Time. last thing that passes through... the 15th th time I died. The last thing that passes through your mind is the fist of a Hellcast. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the second time we ended our life as a great bracelet. Nah, I would more likely say pulverized by Hellcast. Right. <laughs> For some reason, I just... 
I just remember that uh, bit with Ahmed the Dead Terrorist. What's the last thing, last thing that went through your head? I asked. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> and we start over again. Give me a rubber die. This is going nowhere six. fast. Okay. Oh, we're, ba we're back to six again. Yay for six. I love six. <laughs> Everyone I should don't. get some six. <laughs> So does the die today. <laughs> well, you start out with a fierce blow, he starts out with a fierce blow. You lose uh, you lose seven life from a fierce beating. I swear, at some point in time, people are going to look at this thing and make a song about it. It ha would have to have to be a tragic uh, one. A, a tragic love ballad or what? what, what Maybe not love not ballad, but... Not a love ballad, <laughs> god damn it, give it here. And lo and behold, the Kai Lord getting beaten into 7,000 pieces. <laughs> now roll the tie again and accept your punishment yes, like I a man. It. We're getting smacked. Seven. Well, that's an improvement. Right, you hit him with a fierce blow that cleaves through his unholy fe flesh. He catches you with a powerful kick to the temple that sends you spinning through the air, going HOLY FUCK! Before you hit the floor. You lose six life. Let me see. Hold on. Let me see. Okay. Again, to quote Walter of... Yeah, you know, Jeff Dunham. Oh, look. We made a little cut, and then it sort of went, holy crap, we're flying through the air, and now we are basically on the other side of the room. He said that? No, because I realized the joke was bad, so yeah, I decided but to stop but it. Then, then don't say that you're quoting him if you're not going to quote him. As This reminds me of something that Oscar Wilde once says. Once said, what? This is fucked up. <laughs> Actually, he never said that. Again, uh, don't don't say that you're going to quote someone if you're not going to quote them. But yeah, I did yeah, it yeah. ironically. I That's hate when people just when people do something too and they and then they say they do it do it ironically. To defend themselves. Uh, yeah, and thus the trolling of Warlord One has been completed. Let's just oh. move on. Yeah, let's Roll go back to yeah, okay. let's go back to being beaten into submission. <laughs> Seven again. Right! Well, you fall up with another fierce cut and wonders why this thing just won't fucking die. <laughs> it admires your tenacity for a moment, and then kicks you in the, in the crust with such force that you briefly quick kiss the roof. You lose eight life. <laughs> Health potions, now! <laughs> Rana, health potions now! Take it easy, goddammit! I'm about to bust a gut. Jesus, I'm suffering as much as a Kylo does. It is because you don't sound that sound like you're suffering. <laughs> yeah, I'm about to. <laughs> He's about to completely lose it. Give it here, Robert. I, I assume you got ten life back from you quaffing those health potions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you don't. If we don't get moving, then I'm going to completely lose it. Yeah, okay, give me a roll of a die. Well, it said nine, so I'm just sticking to that. Okay, right, you charge forward and he may try to get another punch in at you, but it does almost completely to the side, only catching a four points worth blow to the shoulder before you twirl around and cut deep into his side. It's him screaming in unholy rage to cut deep into his flesh, flesh and organs. And he's still kicking. In a few moments, kicking uh, you if you don't be uh, careful. Okay, rub it again. Where's that holy meat grinder when you need one? Ah, oh, six. Right. Not helping. Okay, he charges forward and drop kicks you into the wall with a bone shattering force, taking another seven endurance points off your life. You charge forward as he rushes forward to finish the job, dodge onto a mighty blow and swing the entire length of the sword through him. The foul creature stops for a moment and realizes it is now cotton too. This is going to kind of ruin his workday. 
And then kind he of. dies. Yeah. This has more physical violence than a Tom and Jerry cartoon. A wretched cry of pain and despair fills the chamber as you strike the killing blow. The hell gas falls, its flesh transforming into a putrid green gas that seeps from the vents in its tattered rope. Your mind reels at what has just occurred, but you dare not dwell on the fearful implications, for the poison in your system is beginning to overwhelm you. Healing power. You must act quickly if you have to save both yourself and Pyro from the failed toxin that is flowing through your veins. Do you have some Lauspor, Rendalim's Elixir, or Wade Herb on you? Let me see. Not anymore. Now we just scoffed it down. Hold on, let me see if there's something. Uh, uh, no. Okay, how much life do we have left? We have... Hmm, we have... 21 life left. Right. Okay, how about you... Uh, uh, I know this is cheating a bit, but rewind a bit so you don't drink one of those health potions. Alright. Didn't we have two launch book that, that restored six? It's if you want to cheat, then we might as well cheat. Yeah. Look, I think after the unholy ass kicking this man gave you, you deserve a bit of benevolence. <laughs> to, put it mild, to put it mildly, yeah. Jesus. Thank you. Look, you've been okay. humiliated enough, is what I'm saying. I never imagined I would be the victim of a whack a mole joke. Right, so you lose six life and you have a lounge book potion. You force yourself to swallow the potion and to stay conscious long enough for it to take effect. Gradually, you feel your strength returning. The pain and nausea disappears, and your limbs stop the uncontrollable shivering as the potion and your latent Kai skills neutralize the toxin in your blood. Now, you use your skill to try to save your companion's life. Placing ha your hands on his chest, you transfer the warmth of your healing power into Pyro's poisoned body, breaking down the toxin by degrees. The treatment is slow and laborious, and it is dawn, it is, and it is dawn of the following day before you know for sure if your skill has saved his life. But at least he is alive, and that is a good thing. The flick of an eyelid and a bead of sweat are the first signs of Pyro's recovery. Slowly he stirs to consciousness, waking from a sleep that was so nearly his last. He can remember nothing of the ordeal, and when you tell him all that has happened, he shakes his head in disbelief. A hellcast, he says incredulous. How can it be? The servants of Dark Lord Gnog have infiltrated this monastery, you reply. They have kept themselves hidden, but I fear the day is fast approaching when they will rise up and break havoc in this town. Already they know our true identities, and I wager they know why we're here. This is bitter news, lone wolf, says Pyro, his face etched with worry. We can afford to delay no longer. If Talestria falls to Dark Lord Gnog before we reach the Danark, then the quest is lost. It is a sobering thought, but you do not dwell on it. You help Pyro to his feet and cast your eyes round the chamber in search of an exit. One of the bowls begins to emit a faint humming sound. The surface of its silvery liquid swirls and glows brighter, casting a phosphor phosphorescent light onto the domed ceiling. The sparkling mist slowly clears and a strange image takes shape, condensing and forming into something wholly alien, something that resembles the head of a monstrous fly. It is a great multifaceted eye stare down at you, gleaming darkly with black fire like two huge clusters of evil jewels. Picture time! Because you really want to see this, don't you? Yes, yeah. I want to see the yeah, okay. yeah, let's see it. Thing. 